I have had an interest in amphibian biology or in biology in general, but especially amphibian developmental biology. Um, since my early childhood, I attended Harvard University for my bachelor's degree. And then I came to Berkeley for my PhD, where I studied the role of hormones in amphibian reproduction and development. And eventually I was hired as a professor at the University of California, Berkeley, and have been here ever since. And about two decades ago, I was hired to study the chemical called atrazine by the manufacturers to examine how these chemicals interfere with hormone action. And my work has shown that when genetic male frogs are exposed to atrazine, it causes them to become feminized and in some cases to completely develop into females. Humans are also exposed to these same chemicals and it's also associated with inducing estrogen production and promoting breast cancer in humans. There's a general concern for human exposure and human health, but in particular, there's a concern for agricultural workers and factory workers. It's the number one contaminant of drinking water, rainwater, et cetera. So when I found results that they didn't like, because they had paid for the research, they had control over when and where I could present the work. And, and that led to, well, to put it bluntly, that led to some problems. I was asked to, uh, misrepresent the data. When I refused to do that, they stopped funding me, of course, and then I continued the research independently and published the research independent of the manufacturer. And that led to a personal attack on me. They tried to have my papers retracted. They tried to have me fired from the university. They threatened me and my family with physical and sexual violence. It was, it was quite, a, quite a difficult couple of decades. In some ways, it, it made me much stronger. And also in a very base way, looking back on it now, it's it's like when you're a little kid and you're being bullied, you just kind of close your eyes and swing, you know? And in some ways, you know, that's how I was responding. I just kind of closed my eyes and kept swinging. And when the dust all settled, you know, they, they weren't able to accomplish what they wanted. And when I first got involved in this, I was very naive. I thought the Environmental Protection Agency, if they know that this stuff does anything bad, they'll get rid of it. It's just not that simple at all. And it's and it's and it should be. The EPA is now finally, after 20 years, said, yes, atrazine is a reproductive toxin, but it's still on the market. It was simple in Europe. You know, two years after my work and the work of others came out, the European Union got rid of atrazine. We're still using 80 million pounds a year here, even with that information. To be honest, my most significant achievement is I have worked with some wonderful students and I have been able to maintain an environment that has allowed them to work and to be successful um, at times when there may have been no other place to do that on campus. Receiving the Organic Pioneer Award from the Rodale Institute, it's, it's wonderful period, just in and of its own, to be recognized for your work and to be recognized that there's an impact in the real world, that there's a, potentially an impact on how we do things and that will make the world a better place for the people coming after us. That feels wonderful. In regards to how important the Rodale Institute is, somebody has to be pushing to reduce chemicals and to reduce the amount of fertilizer that we're putting into the environment. And so if there weren't people to commit it to keeping the environment cleaner, to looking at more sustainable ways to produce food, then we'd really be in a mess. I encourage everyone to support Rodale Institute. You support Rodale Institute and what they stand for, you're supporting yourself and your own health and the health of your children and their children and their children. It's our incredible honor to award Dr. Tyrone Hayes with a 2020 Organic Pioneer Award. At great risk to his personal career, Dr. Hayes has spent most of his time researching and documenting the science around the negative impacts that pesticides have on our personal health and on the environment. Thank you for your work to advance the organic movement. To all of you watching remotely, please join the Organic Pioneer Month celebration by supporting Rodale Institute with a donation at rodaleinstitute.org OPA. Your gift will help us grow the future of the organic movement through research, farmer training, and outreach. Donate anywhere from $1 to $100,000 and you'll be invited to join a panel featuring all of the 2020 Organic Pioneer winners on September 21st. Hope to see you there.